guys, welcome back to a new edition of the Santa Tin Chronicles. We're here with my co-host Janice, who is officially a member of the Santa Tin Chronicles because that's just what it is now. You're a part of the team. <laughs> and today we're talking Georgiana and Sydney. I'm surprised I haven't gone over this one yet. I swore I did when we did our Georgiana character spotlight, but I guess I didn't. No, uh, we haven't. You haven't. We haven't. No. We haven't discussed, I mean, we've hit on it, of course, in all the different yeah. episodes, but uh, not to feature it. Mm -mm. I had it scheduled to be the very last one of the year for some reason. I don't know why. So we're, uh, we're are two months ahead of schedule. <laughs> we well, you expected some other things to happen in exactly. between. Maybe. We're about a month and a half ahead of schedule. So last week, you will have gotten Sydney Crow and Babington is what you have gotten last week. So this is our last character dynamic. So after this, we really need some things to talk about, guys. So send us your fan fiction, send us your Sanditon stuff. If you are a member of any Sanditon group and you want to come on and talk about your group, come on and let's talk to us. We would like to talk to you. So let's dig into Sydney and Georgiana. So the backstory we have, essentially, I did start reading the Sanditon Chronicles book, or not Sanditon Chronicles, Sanditon, the book, the uh -huh. other day, by the way. All right. I should have started way earlier, but I didn't start it until yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I just actually found it on my shelf. So I bought it and then put it up on my bookshelf. And then I forgot I had it on my bookshelf. Uh huh. But the backstory we are given is that she is his ward. And I, when we did our interview with Paula Byrne, she was saying that typically in that time when you had a ward, it was your bastard that you had had with someone else. And you were just covering up by saying, oh, this so and so of so and so that I know is someone I need to take care of, but it's really your child. I don't think that is, and like she was even saying, she's not really sure if that's how they plan out with, with Georgiana and Sydney, but I don't think that's what it is. I think it's true to form that it is the father that Sydney worked for or worked alongside and he died and made Sydney promise all these things to take care of Georgiana. So she became his ward through that process through Sydney's, Sydney's sense of loyalty to this guy. And they, she's from Antigua. And Sydney is obviously not, and he brings her to this, I like, how does she say it? She says, to this dreary, cold climate. Is that what, how yes. she says it? Yeah, this cold island, the clan, yeah, I don't remember the exact words either. Um, but yeah, she's real not happy about mm -mm. being on the, you know, uh, probably when she told she was going to another island, she envisioned it very much more like where she was from. Yeah. And uh, not at all what Britain is like most of the no. year. Well, she didn't mind London as much as she minded Sanditon, but there was a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm sure she did it. Cause she was saying when they had that picnic with um, Otis and Charlotte, mm -hmm. she was saying that she felt a miss, a drift and lonely and lost in London until Otis right. came along. Right, yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to her, Otis had some bad, yes. a bad side. <laughs> But that obviously Sydney was aware of, mm -hmm. you know. And I like and that he never brought it up to her, though. No, he never threw it in her face or anything. But he just treated her like a teenager, which she was mm -hmm. um, a little bit older teenager, but she was relatively new, you know, in this society. Yeah. So that's understandable. And we also figured out that he's only about nine years older than her. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, I'm positive that Jane Austen did not intend mm -hmm. no. for him to be her father appearing no. as a ward. No. Mm -hmm. But I wonder how many in London society just assumed, not knowing there, the age difference. Well, probably not that many of them even knew that he was her, that she was his ward. That well, he was I think preparing. they did if they were in London because she was talking about going to balls. That's where they met was at a ball. So Sydney would have had right. to be there to present her because she couldn't have gone out by herself. And he didn't bring a governess with her to Sanditon. So you have to imagine that she might not have had a steady governess. Hard to know. Hard to know. Yeah. Because we don't know if um, Mrs. Griffiths was in Sanditon and she came there or if she. Oh, that's true. You know, she could have been her her governess in London. And then it was one of the things that she was used to doing was moving to Sanditon for the summer and I know her business was listed on that building, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, could have been just whatever girls were in her care went with her to Sanditon in the summer. Did it address that in the book? No, not that I recall anyway. 
because you're right. It did. They did say that her and her party were coming, and Mrs. Griffiths was a part of Georgiana's party, and brought the the other two girls mm-hmm. with him. You know, the yeah. sisters. That's true. So, but Sydney would have still had to present her as her guardian at a ball, I believe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but she she blames him for everything. She blames yeah. him for. It almost feels like she blames him even for her father's death because that was the end of all things good for her in her head. Yeah. And what they say, she's been already there for five years. So she would have been, she's 19 at this point. So she would have been 14 Mm -hmm. when they left Antigua, which may have been a couple of years. She could have been younger when he actually died. Yeah. You know, so 12 or 13. I mean, she's old enough to know better, but you know, teenagers mix things up together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very common. And honestly, it's easier to hate the people who are closest to you. Uh-huh. The ones you know aren't going to leave. And I think that she knew that Sydney's sense of loyalty would cause him to never leave her. I also think she thought she could get her way if she threw a big enough fit. But I think if it was he was a stranger heading over her, I don't think she would have done that. I mean, you see no. how she is with Arthur when they first meet and she didn't doesn't really say no to him isn't snide to him or anything no and um yeah i'm sure she sees him as more of a parent figure and doesn't want to want at least he sees himself that way in some ways Mm -hmm. you know that he's very serious about you know remember in the first um episode when she says damn your duty yeah you know um so he takes it seriously enough i think he sees his job as to protect her Mm -hmm. and to um keep her from marrying too young and to the wrong people and he's very very aware that people would want to marry her for her money yeah and so i do think that when in her more sober moments i don't mean like drinking sober but you know Mm -hmm. just more sober moments she realizes that she really does need that guidance because she says that to charlotte yeah you know i i'm i have all this i have this fortune and so i need to be managed so and it's she does and you know when things when she gets kidnapped it becomes obvious yeah and she does willingly easily comfortably go with sydney when she is kidnapped when she is found Oh, yes. She's very happy to see him Mm -hmm. (laughs) and Charlotte. But and that's what makes me so sad about the return is that that doesn't redeem him at all to her. No, she can't bring herself to see it that way, at least not in the first um, in the first season. Now, I will tell you that I one of the things I was reading about the second season that I think Justin said in this um, you know, they had a press conference kind of, you know, thing just Mm -hmm. the last three days. Uh, And I think that one of the reasons they brought on more women writers and uh, writers of color was to try and help tell her story a little more realistically. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah. And, and Andy, um, Andrew Davis wrote the last episode of mm-hmm. season one. And I'm just not sure he moved her along in her in his in her character as much as even Justin would have. Yeah. I'll say because there seemed to be a spark of hope there. Mm-hmm. But then she went right back to where she was before. And I get some of me can kind of get that, you know, when she's in her downswing, that she's depressed she's heartbroken she's crushed so she's going to lash out but to go up to charlotte and talk against him and then to after that go up to sydney and right to his face talk against him and how you've ruined my happiness it's it just felt like it was the naivete of a young child Mm -hmm. reacting rather than someone who had just been through a harrowing ordeal because it wasn't just that she was heartbroken. It was also that she was kidnapped and mm-hmm. forced into a scary position. I mean, that oh, yeah, should have been absolutely. the forefront. And, you know, it's interesting too, because in episode six, when they're in London, after she's been saved, 
Um, and he does all these really nice things for her, really bringing, bringing um, Otis in to see her and paying so Otis's debts. Which I and, doubt Georgiana knew. No, well, not unless um, Charlotte told her. Charlotte told her. But regardless, you know, it, it, he, she had to realize it took a lot mm -hmm. for Sydney to bring him to see her. Yeah. Especially since he'd gone to all kinds of efforts to keep them separate before. Um, and then in episode seven, the biggest interaction from them is when she um, says, leave me alone, you know, when she's in her bed and yeah. depressed and he's trying to get her up and around. And I think she feels incredibly, yes, she's heartbroken about Otis, but she's also embarrassed. And you know yeah. that from her conversation with Arthur. So um, and those were both Justin. So Andrew, I just didn't, don't think he moved along that same, same thing. thing. Yeah, I'd agree with that because I think that there was hope for after feeling the embarrassment going to the regatta seeing that no one was staring at her she even had a smile on her face at the regatta when she was excited about what was happening she forgot about her troubles there was a potential there to at least if not correct her because i don't think that her personality could have been corrected completely in that last episode but there at least would have been movement to push her forward out of her naivete a little bit right <clears throat> right yeah so I know this is kind of skipping ahead to season two, but I'm just projecting on what's going to happen yeah. with the two of them because um, we've gotten some news now about season two. So one of the things it says in episode two, and there is a little bit of a write-up on um, Google right now, and it says that Georgiana receives bad news. And I think that bad news is about Sydney being killed. You know, that's mm -hmm. what happens. And so I suspect the nine months that she, between the two seasons, and then when she hears this news, I think it's gonna have sort of unexpected to her um, response. Okay, now I'm on my own and now, so it is logical that Tom would be the person to take over uh, yeah. the guardianship, that makes sense. Um, at least, from that viewpoint it does i was just thinking of tom having access to her money for a minute oh yeah but i'm sure i mean he, he won't he, he didn't he wouldn't do that no but um anyway it'll be interesting to see because i have a feeling they've rebuilt Traf um trafalgar house from the scenes that it's going to oh. be from the scenes that they're showing you know just for I the think. show you mean not in sanditon yeah in, in sanditon because Trafalgar House wasn't ruined, unless you're talking in real life oh. as they were setting up the set. No, I'm 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 saying, of course, the original set was destroyed, mm -hmm. and I think that they created a new set, sort of like, okay, all of Sanditon was getting rebuilt, and so they it wasn't so they got a new house fire, essentially, but they built yeah at least that's and there's like in the previews there's sidewalks there's you know. It's, yeah. it's looks much more finished. Yeah. I'm glad for much, that. Much more like a place that you'd really would want to go visit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, I would like to have heard, and I know we say this a lot of the show, I would have liked to have heard this. I would like to have known the backstory to this. And we say that almost constantly right. as we talk about Sanitan, but to know how Sydney became the ward of her, like what what went on in the father's mind when there was a single man who had just worked alongside him and he thought, hey, I'm going to give my daughter to this guy if I die, or maybe on his deathbed he gave her to her. I wonder well, what the, the process get, was. The hint we get is that, because Sydney says it, says it to um, Tom, that he saved his life, mm -hmm. that Charlotte's, I mean, sorry, Georgiana's father saved Sydney's life. Oh, yeah. And that's so, right. He probably felt he like he, he he owes me, and I know he'll keep the commitment. Yeah, and I love the scene where, again, it's a tavern scene when Crow and Sydney and Babington are all sitting there talking, and he's talking about his responsibilities. And Babington hits it right on the head. She doesn't want to have anything to do with you. 
She doesn't want to listen to you. She wants nothing to do with you. And yet Sydney continues to exert force. Sydney continues to exert boundaries or at least tries to exert boundaries to instill something in her. And I think it's because what I like about him is that he's so closed off emotionally. It takes coming to Santa's and meeting Charlotte to open up, but he's still, it's an act of love to continuously protect someone in that way. And to not tell when he just separated her from Otis to not tell her all the bad things about him and let himself be believed as the bad guy. That takes a certain amount of love to do that for someone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. To burst her bubble like that. Of course, would she have believed him? Probably not. But he could have still attempted and he chose not to. No, that's right. No, I agree. I mean, I think, and he was probably wise to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's, he definitely tries. And it's interesting too, because of course we know that Charlotte points out to him that he isn't in episode two, he isn't um, really doing as much as he could and should be doing. Isn't three? Before. Outside Trafalgar House? Uh, it's outside Trafalgar. You're right, three. During three, yeah. Because they're still at odds in yeah. two. It's right um, after Stringer's accident. Right, right. And when she says, oh, you don't want to hear anything I have to say. And he says, actually, I would like to. I mean, he doesn't say it that way. He has different mm-hmm. words, but that's the inference. And he... Um, and you know, you can tell he listens to her yeah. up until the fact that Georgiana, well, and the other part that happens at the end of three is when Georgiana says, oh, I'm going to try and do better. And he says the same thing. And then he, she turns around and writes <laughs> Otis to come and visit her. Yeah. It was just a ploy. Yeah. And so of course things blow up and, um, Sydney is really hurt when he mm-hmm. finds Charlotte with Georgiana and um, Otis. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I think he, I mean, he was obviously hurt by how Charlotte, I think he, what he was most hurt by Charlotte was that she was openly mocking him, which sent an idea of, so this is your idea of protecting her is to make fun of me and to neglect everything I said to you. But I think that with Georgiana, I think he had some hurt there too because he was genuinely trying to be a better guardian. Right. And Georgiana, he, at that moment, he realized Georgiana lied right to his face yep. when he's yep. making the overtures and he's making the effort to actually be a better person all around for her and be a better person just in general, he's trying to be, and to have it flaunted back in his face so hard in such a almost cruel way, I think it was yeah. painful for him. It's oh, it yeah. almost like confirmed just another woman that I've trusted to be true to her word and wasn't. And he, it was a two-for-one deal there. And of course, he, he doesn't really know how the situation no. came about. And he didn't say, he said to her, he was very vague with her and said, um, keep an eye on her. But he didn't say, I'm concerned she had this relationship in London. Mm-hmm. And which obviously uh, Mrs. Griffiths knew because she told Lady D about it. She said she thought, that's what she yeah. thought it was. Yeah. yeah, but she had a clue. Charlotte did not. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that Sydney's reaction, though, it was uh, anyone who is falling in love with someone who is as closed off as Sydney was and finally opening up, they're going to jump to that assumption no matter what. They don't need to hear your answers or your explanations. That's, That's right. true to them. That's right. Because he hadn't opened up to anybody before. And right. he was starting to open up even to Georgiana. Mm-hmm. And to see how much she still disdained him after he made all these overtures that had to be painful for him. Like I'm making these overtures. I'm telling you, I'm going to be nice. I'm showing you, I'm going to be better. I'm actually giving you physical evidence that I'm going to be a better guardian for you. And you still hate me. I'm still not good enough for you. Right. Right. And it will be interesting to see when they break the news about Sydney's death and, um, Is it Charlotte, confirmed that he's dead? That Justin said, yes. Oh, they're going did. to have them, they're, they're going to have uh, right at the first, like at the beginning, because they want all of us to mourn his loss along with Charlotte, mm-hmm. which also then makes her, you know, makes her heart more ready to go to somebody else. Whereas she might've been holding out hope yeah. if he was alive, which Where was, did he, when did he say that? 
he said this in the last couple of days in this press conference. Okay. Um, the I reposted a several posts on Twitter from somebody who was posting during the conference. Okay. So if you look through my tweets, you'll see it. Okay, I'll go look at that. And we'll cover it more on and when mm -hmm. we talk about it. Yeah. So I think I think that's gonna be, I hope that we see, and I think we will see genuine remorse from Georgiana because I don't right. think Georgiana truly hates Sydney. I think that he is an easy target for her because he's not going to leave his responsibilities behind. He's right. loyal enough that he's going to stay with her no matter what, because that's the promise he made and that's who he is as a man. And I think Georgiana really could see he was making a difference, though she didn't act it. Uh, she right. Hurt and embarrassed. I think she could. So I think that we're going to see some real genuine sadness and grief from Georgiana at his death. And I yeah. hope that we hear her say things about him that are true to who he is rather than I think, filtering it yeah. through her, her pain and her childishness. Right. And it'll be interesting to see if they do any flashbacks, you know, mm -hmm. from the first season. I hope so. And there's gotta be, I mean, even from ch talking with Ollie, how, and I know that not all directors are the same, but how he would say that he would let scenes just go. There's got to be some things that we maybe didn't make it into the first Sanditon that they can, I mean, we know for sure because we saw some of those deleted scenes, but hopefully there's some Georgiana Sydney scenes that might've been cut that they can put in as flashbacks. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. Or at least, you know, enough that you can, you can see some interaction between them. Yeah. Something. But because I think that that needs to be there to solidify going from where she was to where she hopefully is now right and also and also the other thing they've said about georgiana is that in the write-ups that are coming out is that she um is still very hurt and cautious about love because of what happened with otis mm -hmm. so it's safe to say uh, otis isn't coming back at least not to begin with no, he I don't he hasn't been confirmed and I've been keeping a pretty good eye on his Instagram and he hasn't mm -hmm. he hasn't done anything sanitary related at all. Right. So I right. believe that he's done. And they might they might just, I mean, that's one that they could at least close and it's mm -hmm. it's done for us. I think it was done for us at the end of season one. It was. The only the reason we thought something different was because of that extra piece they released. Yeah. That other clip. Otherwise. And I think it's it's hard for us to separate that a little bit because I still include the Crow and Clara thing as, oh, that's part of Samson. Right. That, that happened. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But we can't, yeah. it's we can't take that. Well, whether the writers do or not, yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, and they did say, just so you know, because I know what a Esther and Babington fan you are, mm -hmm. that they are not killing off Babington. They better not. <laughs> I just don't think he's going to be president in, in Sanditon. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, makes he, sense. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it's at a time when parliament is in session and he has to stay in town. He can't leave. I mean, they there's a million excuses they could have excuses. to keep him in yeah. London yeah, or at his right. ancestral seat. There's, a, there's any number of reasons. And Esther right. might come back because she hates London. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. The only thing they say about Esther in here is that Esther Babington has an unwanted encounter in the first episode. So Esther has an unwanted encounter. That's what it says. Maybe with it's Clara with Edward or Edward or both of them. <laughs> so I think we, that, they're both coming back. Yes. And I think that with Clara, I think that she's kind of parted ways with that. And I don't think she let Clara affect her. It was more Edward. Clara was just a tool that was used by Edward, but it yeah, was Edward that affected true. her. Yeah. But I think with Georgiana, I, I think that because of who Sydney was to her, I think that's going to be a big reason for a change in her. I think that them killing him off is going to show her how much he actually meant to her and saying, kind of leading off of her telling him, I'm going to be better too. I'm going to try harder too. He dies and she actually begins to try harder. Right. Right. I think that's very likely. And uh, hopefully... She doesn't act the same way towards Tom that she did. I can't imagine that she would. Did she? I don't. She didn't really. Act I mean, the same. Tom, no, right? no. Let me rephrase that. 
don't I don't think she'll ask the same way towards Tom that she acted towards Sydney. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, and I think I think that will be because of Sydney. Right, right. I think that no matter how she professed to feel about him, no matter how she actually did feel about him, she loved Sydney in some way. And I think that when he dies, she's going to have to come to terms with how much he actually protected her. Right. How much he actually did for her. I mean, he could have just left her for dead. He could have just left her for, well, she's gone. If he really cared as little as he did, but he didn't. He chased her down. He went above right. and beyond what a guardian of that state of that time of that standing of that predicament would have done because yes. he, Sydney, I think truly loved her like a family member. Right. Right. At least on behalf of her, his friend, he did. Yeah. You know, he felt very responsible for her. Mm-hmm. I, think, yeah, I agree. I think for the way that I imagine him talking about her dad. And again, we don't get a lot of that. It's just a lot of my projection on it. Mm-hmm. The loyalty for Sydney, loyalty and love are intertwined. Yeah, I think. And I think that if he had that much loyalty to her father, it was more than just that he saved his life. Yes, that was in there. That's why he would do anything he asked. But I think that loyalty comes out of a a place of love. And I think if he loved him, he would love his daughter. And it will also be interesting to see what Georgiana knows and what she says in the new series about the sacrifice that Sydney made for Sanditon and for her his family you know for all of them even though it was at the price of Charlotte's happiness Mm -hmm. and his own yeah and I have to wonder because obviously Ruth Kearney's not coming back either so and we don't really need her anyway to finish up the storyline but I think that there's there might be something there where Eliza probably didn't want anything to do with Georgiana but Sydney maintained a relationship with Georgiana Oh, I, I think, think that's that safe too, assumption. Yeah. yeah, I think that too would impact his death for her. I yeah, that I, would, you know I, what I mean. Yeah, I don't know what. I don't know what. How they're. It'll be interesting to see. There's still, even though they've given us all these little hints, there's still so much we don't oh, know. Yeah. How they're going to handle it? They can't give so, a gem like that away. Hopefully, they're recording some of those interviews with PBS. Uh, during this time too because they had the you know the main pieces of the cast there Mm -hmm. for the for this press thing you know they had um i don't know who i know rose was there i think um crystal was there and then the two gentlemen that are vying for his her attention um and maybe even the artist Mm -hmm. i think he would be a fun one to talk with yeah that's uh i can never say his last name it's v-a-l-h-o-u-s right right but i don't know how to pronounce it so i don't want to say it out loud (laughs) right right yeah yeah he's probably one you could probably get an interview with for sure i just love his presence with the fandom Mm -hmm. and how much all these new cast members have just embraced everybody in the fandom it's so sweet yeah and it's so kind they don't have to do that they, I mean, it, their job is to promote the show, but they don't have to interact with the fandom the way they have. And they've, everybody on this cast has been phenomenal with that. Even like Jack Fox and Rose, yeah. like they've all done it. And it's great to watch. It's great fun to see. And even though they're in some ways somewhat well-known, I mean, you know, at least they've, there's things you can go back and see that they've done. They're in a little bit different position than Theo because mm-hmm. Theo was just like, you know, a huge star after Divergent, the D- Divergent series. And I'm sure he got just overdone with mm-hmm. the adoration, you know? Yeah. And he said too that there, an interview he did in 2021, he said that he was glad that this impact, that his role had an impact on the fandom the way it did, but he always saw it as a one season thing. And he was happy with how it ended. He thought that was they, they did say now the Brenda, you know, from PBS, mm-hmm. one of the quotes I read was she said that originally Theo was considering coming back, but it dragged on so long and they had and he had all these other offers mm-hmm. that he decided that was a choice he wanted to make, which is yeah. and he was happy with, you know, it was so different the way for a Jane um anderson 
Austin, sorry for a Jane Austen story to be yeah. so different that that he liked that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think to begin with, he would assume he assumed he would come back. But but this this interview that I read with him was also in 2021. So right. it had already been two years since it finished by the time he's making those comments out loud. So I'm sure in the beginning, when it first ended, he was saying, you know, hey, maybe I'll come back. Well, but and and let's face it. And we've discussed this before all of us going through this pandemic, there's times when you think about your life and what it is you want to do and what you exactly don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I just talked to a gal today. This is totally an aside. You can cut it out. Um, I, one of the vet techs at, at the vet hospital I was at today <clears throat> is from North Carolina and she really likes it out here. Her husband's in the Navy and they're being transferred down to Florida and she said, but, you know, she was talking about the difference because in the South, people are openly hospitable and, you know, sweet, right? And here, people aren't always that way in Washington. They're kind of like, once they get to know you, they are, but they're a little hands off to begin with. It's a totally different environment. But on top of that, for two of the three years she was here, the pandemic was going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's not a good time to... But she's interested in coming back and at least visiting in the future. She likes it. But anyway, that's yeah. really off the subject. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that it, had he come back, obviously the storyline would have looked a whole lot different. But I think that without him, it's going to have the same impact on Georgiana as I hope they would have driven her anyway. Because what, what our hope for Georgiana has always been to see her more mature, to right. see her less about herself and more acknowledging at least that, that there are other people in existence that have wants that have hurts that have pains that have joys so i think yeah. that I, I would like to think that she would have still gone in the same direction as i hope they're going to bring her this is just a different way to get her there faster right yeah no i i totally agree yeah she and to be able to see things from other people's perspective mm -hmm. no yeah for sure and i think yeah. that the way she meddled with Charlotte and Sydney, I, it was almost, it was cruel. Because when they, she's sitting in episode eight, when Charlotte is telling her about what Sydney said the night before, and she's all excited about it, Georgiana is not being a true friend right there to Charlotte. She is acting solely on her own heartbreak and the fact that she cannot trust the, her own judgment because the one that she loved her not to be so nefarious right that's not being a good friend that's that's ruining someone else's chance at happiness because your chance at happiness was ruined and she does the same thing when she talks to sydney at the ball that night well you've done your best to ruin my happiness why why wouldn't i suspect you do the same to her and it's solely based off of her own experiences 100 percent. right because right. she that's can't right. fathom it would be any different for anybody else and uh she at least she's attempting to stop the relationship but that isn't what stopped it no but i think it's just really indicative of where she was mentally she right. and you know who knows maybe if if sydney would have married her married charlotte georgiana would have eventually come out of that and realized oh wait i'm just saying this because i'm hurt by my own things maybe she would have done that but i think that they needed to use that sort of to as, as a starter for why she was the way she was. Right. And I yeah. think there has to be an awakening of, no, oh, wow. Yeah. This I, I think, well, I hopefully will see her uh, mature a lot in this, in the next two series. You yeah. Know? And that's the impression I get. Mm -hmm. you know? Right off the gate, I feel like we're going to get it right off the bat. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it'll be interesting to see where all this goes. It's like, can hardly wait yes it's like but there's only days now or yeah. seven yeah eight times seven can't do that kind of math <laughs> eight <laughs> times six is 48 plus eight is what 56 um, yeah 56, 56 yeah mm -hmm. so there's 56 days left for sure because we're doing a rewatch starting i told everyone a rewatch was starting on the 25th but it by the time you see this it will have already started because it's starting on the 23rd of january so if you have not right. started that rewatch yet you can pick up just do the math from january 23rd to whatever day it is when you're hearing this that's the episode we're on 
do one right. episode a week. So we have we have eight weeks of rewatch. So that's 56. Yeah. I'm really, yeah. really, really excited. Yeah. And I'm, no, obviously no. I'm not alone in that, but I mean, this is a big deal. What this fandom was able to do, what we were able to get, what these writers were able to come up with in the midst of, I mean, because yeah, Sydney, Theo James didn't make or break Sanditon. He didn't, but he was no. a huge part. So these writers had a huge heel to come up. And they and, said that was their hardest job. Yes. Because to overcome this. They're doing this for the fans because the fans fought so hard for it, but the fans were fighting for Sidlot. And the fact that we don't get that, but we still get two seasons. I mean, these writers had an incredibly difficult, they were put in a very difficult position. Oh, and yeah. I, I think that they're good enough to overcome it. Yeah, and I, I do. They wrote the words that he said, you know, they, they exactly. wrote the first season, um, you know, and, and there'll be additional writers in on it, but the concepts and everything. Um, yeah, it'll, I'm ex very excited about it. And it will be interesting to see where it goes. I'm sure there will yeah. be things we'll expect and things we'll have no idea mm -hmm. about. And I think that they're going to be able to give Sydney a death that is noble and good enough that it's not going to alter our feelings towards Sidla. It's going to make oh, us yeah. celebrate what they had. And it's, we're going to grieve it, obviously, because we don't get it. But I think it's still going to leave Sydney in a light that is, you still love him. Right. Yeah, and I think that absolutely. because of his death, we're going to love Georgiana in a way that we hadn't before. Right. At least right. that's my hope because she, I like Georgiana. I like what she brings to the table. I like her potential. But in season one, oh, I wanted to slap her character so many times. <laughs> <laughs> the one, one exception to that is in the epi in episode two, when they go to the church and she, she and Esther and um, Charlotte are the ones who are going, like rolling their eyes about that sermon, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're the three of them. And then yeah. also in episode two at the luncheon, She's being a brat about going to the luncheon, but at the luncheon, she's pretty bright on target. Yeah. You know, she's very astute. Yeah. And I think, I even think that her tantrum before the luncheon, which I don't, I think she overreacted, but I, on some levels, I don't think she overreacted because she knew what it was. She was right on about what it was. Right. Fan out the girl, the negress with all the money and fawn at oh, her, yeah. stare at her, gawk at her. She knew that's what it was. And right. you have to imagine how many times that has happened to her before. And it breaks my heart that that's happened to her that many times. Of course, we yeah. don't say that, but obviously the signs of the times, we know what that era was and we know what she is in that era. And it's not a kind thing. And right. so she was right there. But I, I, I think that her taking on Sydney was, again, you take your stuff out on the people who you know are not going to leave where there's the least risk possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what she was doing with Sydney there. But I think that all the other aspects after that with, even when she was talking to Charlotte on that hill in episode two, and she was, she even said, do you find me very bratty and sulky? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I find you bratty and sulky. <laughs> but Charlotte was sympathetic to <laughs> exactly. her because they were both in the same boat. Mm -hmm. They were strangers there. And, and Georgiana did have reason to, I mean, she was a black woman in a regency era with money right people were well, not charlotte also had been mistreated really by sydney as well at that first ball yes i don't think georgiana was ever mistreated by sydney though charlotte uh, no. was a little bit but no, charlotte she was... wasn't mistreated until she gave a very very frank opinion of his family right because she wasn't used to a society where you didn't say what you meant yes and um Georgiana was mistreated by the people waiting somewhat by the people at the coach waiting for the coach just because she was so ignorant about how you paid mm -hmm. and they were being pretty nasty to her but even the coach that. saying I'm all right with it if you are all right with it he said to the crowd does anyone have that's a problem true. it was I only mean, after that yeah that, and that's because she was a black woman well and she kind of put on an error right <laughs> Yeah, but I think him asking them if they were okay with it was because she was a black woman. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And so yeah. we don't see it, but you know, because you know what that time was, that that's why she felt so adrift in London. 
because she was a black woman with money and she was just way out of her element Mm -hmm. and everybody probably made sure she knew it well i don't know if they went out of their way but it was i think london society would have gone out of their way not sanditon but i i do think london society would have let her know you don't know have you ever seen the read the book or seen the film bell that's based on a book that paula wrote Mm -mm. and it's a historical novel as it were um about a woman who was a ward who was had a had money and was a ward in london in the similar time frame yeah it's it's really well done i I guess I'm gonna have to buy a copy of it because right now I don't think I can just watch it on any of my streaming services, but it's really good. I mean, it's really well done. And when I learned that Paula had written it, I was so excited. I mean, I saw it several years ago, well, a lot of years ago on regular television. And- Oh, Paula wrote Bell? Yeah. Okay. Paula Byrne wrote Bell. Well, then I'll have to pick it up then. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's, but I, the book would be good, I'm sure. And the film was good. The, te- it was a, I, I don't, don't know if it was a made for television movie. Television's where I saw it. Yeah. On regular, regular television. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, and that was based on a true story. So it wasn't completely un, um, unimaginable yeah. these things happened. I mean, the, black women ended up with money you mm-hmm. know but it wasn't the norm and i think just going oh. off obviously obviously it's, it was a little different in america the way it was in england i think that blacks and again this is just because i live in america it feels like blacks were way more persecuted during that time than you really hear about in regency england maybe i don't know but i just i have this image that all blacks were treated as you're worthless and that's that time not period. really true but the i mean there's many examples of um blacks that were either born free or Mm -hmm. were their owners or parents or whatever gave them their freedom um which is i mean it wasn't common don't get me wrong yeah yeah, there was a lot more of either abuse you know my experience with that um and reading about it and the time i lived in the south was it was more like this. It's like, well, you know your place. Yeah. And it was uh, that they were constantly beaten or, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But I mean, it's not good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what I mean. I think that being a Black, in, in that society, all it took was a whisper of something possibly bad that you could have done. It could ruin a reputation. Well, that was true for poor people too. I know of any color. It didn't really matter what what color they were; they could be ruined easily. Yeah, especially women. And that's what I'm saying that it was so easy to ruin a reputation there. That as a black woman who had money entering into the society, that she was so far out of their water. I mean, she. I have to imagine that life in Antigua society is way different than life in London society. So she probably didn't know what really, she felt out of water because she was out of water. But then you also have these people who let her know, hey, you're not one of us. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. There's people like that, I agree. There's people like that, 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 you know, if you're just not from there, if you're not, Mm -hmm. you don't come from the right part of town, you don't have the right money, they treat you like that. So I think that she probably had some semblance of reason to be sulky but she was just aiming it at the wrong people. Yeah. I think. Except yeah, for when yeah. she aimed it at Lady Denim, that she was right in that moment. She was right <laughs> at Lady Denim. But for the most part, she aimed it at the wrong people. And, you know, especially like Mrs. Griffin treated her well. I mean, she tried to limit her. She was, you know. She was ridiculous, to, but. Yeah. But she didn't. She treated her like she was just one of the girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which. Which for this older girl with money, it was a problem for her. You know, it works both ways. Yeah. And I think, again, to the point where you attack those who are who will never, who are going to be less likely to leave you 
the way she antagonized Mrs. Griffith, she knew that Mrs. Griffith had to keep her. <laughs> right. Because Sydney was paying her. She had a job to do. She wasn't going to kick Georgiana out. So fine, I'm going to make it hard for you. <laughs> and even no, that she was, was trying. She was trying to do exactly what Sydney told her to do or what she assumed he expected. Yes, exactly. And the effort or the, not the effort, the ease with which she lied was insane. <laughs> it was. It was amazing. Yeah. Even How, Charlotte and, met comments on it. Right. And, and she didn't have any trouble lying to Charlotte. Mm -mm. That was the part that, that was one part where I was like, wow, you are really all about yourself because Charlotte is actually being a true friend to you, a good friend to you. And right. then you lie right to her face. Yeah. And it just, and she wasn't even sorry about it. She right. apologized to her in the moment, but she said it with a smile. She wasn't sorry about it. <laughs> she got exactly what she wanted. She was not sorry. And it was interesting how Otis kind of realized how much they had misjudged Charlotte. Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. the two of them had first met and Charlotte was very charitable. <laughs> yeah. You know. And I think it's it would be remiss to not point out that Georgiana and Sydney are a lot alike. In that yeah. they are... Sydney was perceived one way. He was closed off and that's why he was perceived one way, but he felt different on the inside. Georgiana acted out in one way, but she, because she wanted to project specific image when she was heartbroken specifically, she presented an image of, no, I, I'm not, I'm not heartbroken. I'm just mad at everybody. That's the image she gave to society. So I think that they both were very strong willed. They were both very loyal because even after Otis left, she still loved him. I mean, she didn't, she didn't, right. you know, they weren't a thing anymore, but she still loved him. So their loyalty is the same. I think their stubbornness is the same. They're very strong willed. Both of them are, and they both have very strong ideas of what is right and what is good. And that's what they follow. Yeah, I agree. So okay. I think, I think that's pretty much all that we have to say. Well, I mean, we could sit here and talk Sanderson for hours and hours and hours and hours, but that's, I think we pretty well covered the ins and outs of Sydney and Georgiana. If you think we missed something, reach out to us at the.sandersonchronicles at gmail.com. I'll be happy to, to talk with you about it. And you can also find us on our Facebook group, the Sanderson Chronicles, Sanderson Family Fan Club, where we will have, we can have discussions with you there. And I, there are almost 1,500 members on there who would love to have a conversation with you about this too. So come in there, find some friends. That's how I met Janice was through this podcast and through that group. So you're going to meet friends on there. You can also yeah. reach out to us on Twitter and Instagram under the Sanderson Chronicles. Trying to be more active. I did put out some posts today. Don't forget to continue with our rewatch. I think by the time you see this, we will be on two, three, four. We will be on episode four or starting episode five, I think. The hardest one for Sydney and, Char and yes. Georgiana. <laughs> so continue with rewatch. We are excited that there's only one month left until we see actually less than a month until we see season two premiere so on that note we'll see you in a week guys have a good one bye-bye bye-bye